So I'm going to walk you through the steps in order to identify the link that you can use when you're creating content curated collections for people who may not necessarily have access to university library databases. So first of all, we're starting at the library front page and we're going to navigate to the education databases. So we're going down to the databases to education. And in this example, we're going to be using ProQuest. So we go to P for ProQuest, select ProQuest. Now we don't want to search all of the databases. We only want to search the education databases. So if we click on this hyperlink, will take us to a list of all of the different databases under the ProQuest umbrella. I'm going to unselect them all, and then I'm going to choose, scroll down and just choose education. So I just scroll down here and click education database. And you can see this is abstracts and indexing of over 900 education journals. So that's going to cut down a lot of the irrelevant articles because otherwise I'd be searching engineering, environmental, all sorts of different databases, which I'm not interested in for this search. So I click, go back up to the top and choose use selected databases. Now, I'm actually not going to do that search. I'm going to do inquiry learning information literacy. Now you can see that I have used the quotation marks uh, around the phrases so that it searches those exact phrases and having them like this in this order means that it's going to search for articles looking that involve inquiry learning and information literacy. So I do a quick search. Now you will see that the top article might be very interesting but it's from it's a paper from a from an annual from the IFLA, the International Association of School Librarianship Conference. I'm actually going to come back and look at that one in a minute. But at the moment, we're going to look, let's say this particular article, Guided Inquiry Learning in the 21st Century, is the perfect one for us to add to our curated collection. So if I click on that article, you'll see that it comes from the journal portal, Libraries and the Academy. And if we have a look up here, this is what you would consider to be the URL for this particular article. Now, I could easily use that URL in my curated collection. I could use that to draw in the article. However, what you'll find is because the URL here, it is the article's location within the QUT library access of the database. So this means that if I use this link in my curated collection, Although the curated collection is available for everyone in the world to see and to access, the only people who are going to be able to go any further when I click on the link in my curated collection will be people who have a login to the QUT library. They might even have access to this database through another uh, university or through a different library, but they're not going to be able to access it because the URL directs through the QUT library. So that's going to narrow the audience and who can access this quite a, big, quite a lot. And it's going to actually render my curated collection fairly useless for most people. So I don't want that. So what I would consider, what I would suggest you do is look to see if the article has a DIOI, a document object identifier, which is the number each each article and most almost all articles published uh, at least in the last two or three years definitely but you can see this is one from 2008 and it has a DOI has this number it's a similar to an ISBN for a book but it's for um, journal articles and this number uh, essentially acts as a URL for the location of the article for anyone in the world to access. They may not be able to access the full text because unfortunately the database requires you know you to have a subscription to it in order to access the full text but they can at least access the abstract and see where it is hosted so that they can make the decision whether they want to go further or not with it. Now you might think that if I go to the site citation and go uh, this will load up you might think that this here, the DOI HTTP, is the DOI that I'm talking about and I could use that link. But unfortunately, no. 
even in this in this citation, it still links back to libraryqt.edu.au. So while it's perfectly acceptable for me to include this in my reference list, perhaps, it's not acceptable for me to use when I'm trying to share a link to anyone outside of who doesn't have access to QUT databases. So this is not the way we want to go either, okay? Unfortunately, when we're curating, we just want this DOI here. Now, it can be easy to find, like in this case, it might take a little bit of searching. But a tip for you is usually in the longer citation here, you can see that that is actually the, D the standalone DOI. And this EZP01 library is the ad additional information which is narrowing it down to the QUT library. So if I just copy that, part, which is essentially the same as this, this DOI on its own. And if I type in here, HTTPS DOI.org slash, and then paste that DOI in, the article will come up from the uh, actual website of the journal itself. So you can see here, no institutional, I'm not logged in. This is what anyone will see, uh, regardless of whether they have access or not. Now I could then choose if I was really interested and I didn't have access to a database, I could choose to buy the entire issue. Sometimes you can buy the individual article, or you might go to a state library or a public library, which might have access to the database. But you can see that there's actually quite a good summary here of the article that's freely available. So this is what I want to include. This link is what I want to include in my curated collection, not the QUT link, which is only going to limit access. Now, if we just go back and we go back to our results, let's look at the conference paper, which is another type of article that you may well come across in a journal database, uh, which also will have a similar problem in the fact that if I link to the URL that's presented here, it's going to be limited to QUT library users. If I click on the site, you can see that it's limited to QUT library users. Uh, quite good quite complex URL and you can see it even has account IDs and all sorts of things. Because this one is a paper from a conference, it doesn't have a DOI. It's not a journal article. It's a bit like how a, a book has an ISBN, but a magazine has an ISSN and a journal article has a DOI. Conference papers generally don't have these identifying numbers, which is a little bit of a pain, but it's just the way that things are. So if I want to curate this particular article, uh, this particular conference paper for people outside of QUT to access, what I'm going to need to do is do a little bit of investigation. This is selected papers from the In International Association of School Librarianship, and it's the 2016 conference. So what I'm going to have to do is be a little Sherlock Holmes and actually go to IFLA, search for IFLA conference. Here we go. Most conferences that are still going will have a page that's already set up for the current conference and usually for previous conferences as well. So if we scroll down, we can see past conferences, 2016, and here we can see the conference program. And usually what we can do is we can usually find from here a link that will take me to the conference papers as they are um, curated on that website. So this is the what I would do is I would continue to navigate through until I found that particular conference paper and I would hyperlink to that in my curated collection. So you can see it does take a little bit more investigation, a little bit more Sherlock Holmes, 
But what we're aiming for is a curated collection that everyone, regardless of whether they can access the database that we've used to find the article or not, can, can use. They can at, le at the very least get to the abstract of the article, read about it, and then make a decision as to whether it's useful for them. So it's a little bit complicated. It's a little bit uh, multi-stepped but it does make your curated collection far more worthwhile. If you simply use the URL from the database, you're going to limit the users so dramatically that you might as well not do it. So I hope that that helps you in uh, establishing your curated collection for journal articles and articles that you find through university databases.